Hey guys, I'm Lee and this is Mariam and we finally did it. We're creating a relationship advice series here on the channel. It's something we've been wanting to do for some time now and we're really excited to get this going today. As you guys know, we've been together for a long time, longer than most marriages, especially mm -hmm. with people our age. We feel like we are experts in this field and we can give some solid advice to you guys. Of course, we're gonna keep it lighthearted and fun. We're gonna be drinking some wine mm -hmm. while we're at it and we are gonna be answering all of your questions. We're gonna be open, transparent, honest. We really wanna make a difference. That's the main reason why we're doing this. Yeah. We wanna be able to help you because we care about you guys. You're part of our community. So remember to subscribe, comment down below, hit that notification bell, give us some thumbs up, leave your questions down below if you have any. With that said, let's get to our first question. To the first question. Mwah. How do you start a relationship? Wow, that's a really, really great question. That's a tough question, um, man. I'm gonna answer this one. Go for it. So many people start off a relationship with the wrong, with the wrong intention. For example, if you're a woman looking for the right guy, you may take your culture in mind. You may take that person's status in mind. Does he have, does he make money? What kind of car he drives? His status, how other people perceive him. Those are not what I call universal truths uh, to establishing a good core base for your relationship to build upon. What are the universal truths for you and truths that are established throughout time, timeless truths? Is this person a good person? Is this person's intent good? How they treat their family, how they treat themselves. Those are to me qualities that really help shape the relationship and you can build love upon. But if the person is egotistical, super narcissistic, self-centered, just a generally not a good person, you could pretty much, you don't have time to fix people all the time. What you're saying is you shouldn't shape a person into these qualities that you like. They should already right. kind of of be that person. The core values. Right. What are some universally accepted good traits that you want your mate to have? If I may add to that. Sure. I think in order to make yourself a little bit more susceptible to finding the real thing, you have to love yourself first and also yeah. love your environment, love your neighbor. And I think if you go into it with kindness and if you just make yourself a little bit more open and available, then the right person will find you and they will see those good qualities in you right. and those good qualities will in turn attract the good qualities in the mate that you're looking for. Next question is, what do you find annoying about each other and uh, also how do you deal with it? Can I go first? Yeah, sure. <laughs> please, please. A lot of people think that me and Lee have this perfect relationship and no, we do not. We have a great relationship but it's not perfect because no one's perfect and yes, both of us have qualities that <laughs> each other finds annoying. In my case, I think that Lee can just be a little bit too much. <laughs> just about everything that he does. <laughs> He's a very intense person. I can be. You know, this is a good quality and a bad quality, both at the same time. He basically puts all of himself into everything that he does, which makes him just really intense and sometimes tough to be around. He's a perfectionist. And so am I, but Lee is like, he's an ex-ballet dancer. So trust me, he is a perfectionist. So sometimes I just wish he would like take it from a 10 and like lower it to like a six, 6.5. That would be great. I get over it because I know that ultimately you're a good person. I know you're very intense and you're very perfectionistic and all that stuff, but overall you're a great guy and you're a good person. And so this little, Likewise. Nuisance. I get it. It's just a nuisance. That's what it is. You get over it by what is the universal truth in our relationship. And in this case, it's the fact that we really know each other really well. If I'm being too much or she's being, in my case, I think she's really stubborn. A. Exactly. So, and I also think you're very indecisive. I'm so, a Libra. So All Libras are indecisive. For me, that drives me crazy. So the worst thing I could do is put more options in front of her. I have to learn how to work with her. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's how you overcome it. So I think the advice I would give to you out there would be know your partner, know what their strengths and perceived weaknesses are and kind of work around it. Don't shove it in their face, you know, and gently work through it together. You're stubborn too though. Not really. You are super stubborn. I'm stubborn with the truth. <laughs> well said. I think a lot of people can relate to this next question. How do you deal with jealousy and your partner looking at other people? So that's like two questions wow, in one. one. I think we should tackle the first Which question one? first. Which is how is... do you deal with jealousy? I'm not a particularly jealous person. No, you're not. And I think that comes from just like, not, and not just in a confidence in myself, but I have a lot of confidence in our relationship. So I don't really have that issue. 
but you're a little bit different from me. This is how I would handle jealousy. If Mariam were to come up to me in a fit of rage or <laughs> jealousy, um, I would actually be quiet. I would really make sure I'm listening to everything she's telling me. I wouldn't judge her. I would try to get as much information as I can and not take it personal. When someone's jealous and they come and they approach you, they have a backstory already. They've already seen you. In their head. Right, and it's all in their head. You know, they've already seen you sleep with that person, kiss that person, hang out with that person, several text messages with that person. They've built this whole narrative already. And so if you try to challenge their jealousy, all you're doing is creating conflict. There was like one or two times Mariam has been jealous and I listen. And then I assure her, I let her know that, look, that's not what's happening. That's not what's going on. And you may be a little jealous and that's okay. And most of the time they'll deny it. So if that doesn't work, just be like, hey, look, I'm sorry you feel that way, but that's not what happens. I assure, you know, I'm, I love you. It's kind of weird because <laughs> We really don't experience jealousy like that. Although I did experience it recently a little bit with Snoop Dogg with the picture you put up on Instagram. You it were was, jealous of that picture? It was so minute. It was so Guys. little. We could post a picture here. His hand is draping over her. You could see how that could make me a little uncomfortable, right? There were a couple comments on that photo yeah. that were like, hey, how did Lee feel about this? You know, looking at other people or taking a picture with a celebrity, which may be a little risque or whatnot, can trigger some jealousy, I understand, but what is your partner's intent? Is your yeah. partner's intent to just take a picture with the celebrity because they truly just admire the celebrity? Right. Is your partner's intent to look at this good looking bartender or waitress because they just simply find them good looking? If that's it, then it's human nature. But if your partner's intent is to actually do something with the well, celebrity- Well, that's a different problem altogether. Exactly, then you have a problem. you've got a problem and yeah. then you might be in a toxic situation. Right, that's so, not in your head, that's a real problem. Really, you need to find out what is your partner's intent. Correct. He mm -hmm. knows that my intent with Snoop yeah, Dogg was to take a prom pic with him. That's what they all I say. am not attracted to him and by any sure. means. He's like my are. mother's yeah, age. Right. I mean. You like him old. <laughs> <laughs> like you. <laughs> All right, wine is kicking in. Uh, next question is, being that we've been together for as many years as we've been together, mm -hmm. how do we keep it fresh? How well, do we keep it spicy? Well, we have been together for a very long time, 17 plus years, almost 18, so I understand how this question can come about. It's actually kind of a touchy one because so many people don't even realize maybe they're with their partner because it's been such a long time and it's much more convenient to actually stay with them than to break apart, but they're not really questioning themselves. How can they actually make it better so that they want to continue this journey together? So for me, that's not the case at all. This is the guy that I chose. This is the guy, the guy that I want to be with. And how do we keep it spicy? It's simple. We see the human being in each other every single day, not the superficial stuff. How how much money each other makes or you know what kind of car we drive but actually what kind of person is Lee what kind of person am I and that's what keeps me attracted to Lee you know knowing that he's a good person knowing that he could potentially be a good father to my children Wow Hold in the on. future okay, thank you <laughs> sexy right <laughs> yeah. uh, and also I really like seeing different sides of Lee. So for example, when we travel, I like when Lee is a little bit vulnerable and not this like almighty, all powerful, knowing everything self, which he normally is at home. For example, we just went to Paris and Lee was so adorable. He was actually attempting to speak French and his French is terrible by the way, but he was still so cute. He wanted to impress me with his French skills and he would I order did. coffee and he would order breakfast every morning speaking this really, really bad French. And Hey. I personally found it really refreshing and I really enjoyed it because I don't really get to see that vulnerable, weaker side of him. Taking yourself out of your normal day-to-day -day routine, doing different things. I know traveling is not for everybody. I know it's not something that everyone can attain. You know, even seeing a different type of movie or going out to dinner and for trying sure. different foods. I think you're a lot more romantic than I am. I kind of just have some basic stuff I would do <laughs> to keep it fresh. Throw it in there. <laughs> okay, so for me, from a guy's perspective, not that I'm not agreeing with everything, you said, I think for me, I laid out all the important details of what I'm attracted to and what I'm not attracted to. I feel almost crazy for, for saying that, but it's the truth. If you can sit down with your significant other uh, and ask him, what are some of the absolute no's, like the ticks, like the, the, the things that you find most unattractive in women, okay, in, as a whole, and just let it happen naturally, the conversation. And that person is gonna tell you exactly like the hard no's. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Exactly, you know where I'm going, because I have some hard no's, for example. My hard no's are no farting. 
I'm deprived. <laughs> no burping out loud. No shaving your mustache. No poop talk. No, no period poop talk. No, peri no nope. pimple popping. Nope. None of that nasty she stuff. She knows. And he That's might mine. be in the minority. I maybe. Because there are tons of guys who love maybe that shit. Maybe guys love. Maybe guys connect love it. with their mates. Maybe on that stuff. And that's kind of the conversation I think you should have with your significant other because that's mm -hmm. the, she knows. So that's how we keep it fresh. That's how we just, when you guys are in a fight, what are the memories or qualities to keep you guys together and thankful? Mm. Like I said before, Lee and I are not perfect. We have our fights. We have our moments. Yeah. After every argument, once the anger subsides, one of the things that really brings us back to each other is knowing that we're good people. Lee yeah. is a good person, I'm a good person, our intent is good. Mm -hmm. And even in those moments when we're angry, yeah, sometimes we're hijacked, sometimes we get overtaken by emotion, but yeah. ultimately we mean well. You're coming from a good place and yeah, you mean likewise. that because you just want to propel us forward. Yeah, not to say that we haven't had arguments where we've crossed the line. I think we have. it'd be unrealistic to think that we haven't. I think if we could use our experience to say that if you cross that line, be aware that you did cross that line and don't try to justify it. It's never okay to hurt your other half and it never will be. Just be careful that you're not with someone who doesn't respect you. And if you're with somebody that's really trying to hurt you, it might be time to leave. How do you get your partner to quit smoking or other bad habits in a healthy way? I do have some experience with that. Yeah. Because uh, Lee used to smoke back in the day. Smoked for 13 years. That is a long time. Yeah. He started way before I met him when he was like a young teenager. Yeah. And then when I met him, he actually quit for like a month or two. Mm -hmm. And then he started smoking again. So I was like, whoa, I've been deceived. <laughs> In my youth, I was a teenager at the time, I was just so upset and so disgusted, so I would constantly pester him. Every time he would light up a cigarette, I would just yell at him and I would be so annoying. I would just like tell him how ugly his lips look when he's smoking and how he's getting spots and I would just like start trashing him. And that honestly wasn't the right <laughs> way to go about it. Nope. It only made him angrier and it only made him want to continue smoking just to spite me because I was annoying him. In my experience, I would say that you kind of have to be a human being. You really have to listen to your partner you have to acknowledge that this is what they're going through and you have to be really delicate and very diplomatic you have to pick a time yeah. to talk to them about this issue basically when they're not smoking you should try to approach them ask them like hey do you think this is good for your health and do you think this is good for our well-being I think it's a really great time for you to practice empathy understanding wait to after they finish smoking perhaps when there's a conversation that could be had at a later time where you guys both say hey how can we together work on this issue because I think we both can agree that cigarette smoking is not good for you are you okay do you think you can stop how can I help also you have to tell yeah. your partner that the reason why you're saying this is because obviously you love them you and love you them, care for care. them and you care yeah. for their well-being and you want them to be healthy and good I think you have to come from a very caring place as opposed to just selfish annoyed place if that makes sense yeah. the next question is how do you handle finance between y'all and and for example, the woman making more money. And then there was another question similar. Should a woman always work or can she stay home? I think it doesn't really matter. It I doesn't mean, really matter how much money who makes, no. whether a woman or a man makes more money. We've been in all types of situations. There was a moment in our life where I wasn't making any money at all. I was making zero dollars. I was a broke ass college student busting my ass for that 4.0 every day of my life. Those were rough times. But during those times, Times, Lee was the only one who was making money and he was basically taking care of me and supporting me throughout the whole entire time. For us, it was really about responsibility. It wasn't so much about money. It was more about if I'm busting my ass for that 4.0, Lee is busting his ass at work. If I'm busting my ass making videos and editing videos every day, then Lee's in the other room and he is busting his ass and he's taking care of other responsibilities. It's all about balance. It's all about making sure that you guys are both working towards your collective goal. Just going because I just I think it was such a good point. It's like, what are your goals? I don't see Mariam as greater than me or beneath me. I see her as people on this planet. She's my equal mm -hmm. and we're a team and this is our lives and she's my family and we have a common goal that we want to pursue together. Do you ever go to bed angry? Oh, okay. In my opinion, one should never go to bed angry. I'm not going to say that Lee and I didn't have a whole year where we were arguing a lot yeah. and we would go to bed angry almost every single night. Looking back at it, the advice that I would give myself is 
that the morning is smarter than the night. It's actually an old Russian proverb. Утро вечера мудренее. Basically, you make better decisions in the morning. You should never try to resolve an issue at night. You should just squash it to the best yeah. of your ability. Go to bed, sleep, wake up, and then tackle it. Yeah, I'm just gonna add on to that for the American viewers. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't like my Russian proverb? No, I'm just kidding. The advice I would give you is that relationships have storms, but on top of the storm is always the sun. And it's always shining bright if you're in a great relationship. What do you do when someone texts or calls you all the time when you go out? Turn off your phone. Is it cute or is it toxic? <laughs> Turn Holy off your phone. Shit. This is one of my pet peeves. Now you turn off the phone, it'll kill you. Honestly, like <laughs> when Lee calls me for anything, if I am not at home, I just get super short with him. I get so angry and annoyed. I pick up the phone and I'm like, what? What? Like I get so frustrated. He doesn't do this as often as he used to, like in the beginning of our relationship, mm. but this is something that I don't consider particularly healthy. And this all boils down to trust. If they know exactly where you're going, there shouldn't be a reason for them to pester you, to bug you with these texts and phone calls. I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's nice. I think it's actually provocative. It's provoking you and it should be stopped immediately. So you should have a talk with your partner about that. Again, we're going yeah. back to intent. Find out what your partner's yeah, intent, what the is. intent is. I think it's really good. Great point. Actually, I think that's absolutely right. I want to give an example. You have to find what the intent is right behind the texting and the calling. When you get in front of your partner, have a conversation about it. Try to ask, why are you calling me so much? Why are you texting me? But don't get mad. Go into it with curiosity and empathy and try to understand. The problem is, is that super generalizing here, most guys will defend their insecurity by putting the macho in front. He's trying to make it seem like he's concerned when in reality he's jealous. So it's a bit of a complicated situation, but you want to kind of get on top of that sooner than later because as the years go on, that's that narrative builds up. Yeah, we'll you got to nip that in the bud. The next question is, do you you have an open relationship or would, would you ever right. invite a third person into the bedroom uh, no absolutely no. no just kidding <laughs> No, nah, that's just not who we are. Yeah, we know people who are in open relationships, yeah. but... And it works for them. Yeah, that's just not who we are. And yeah. it's just not something that we can advise you on because we've never been those people. Both and I'm not judging. Way. Listen, it works for some people. I just don't see myself in that situation ever. I'm too much of a one man kind of woman. I just can't see myself as that person. It's just not something I could ever see myself doing with you. I think it would just really change the dynamic of our relationship and I would never want to jeopardize our relationship. I would never want to put it through something that it possibly can't handle. I'm physically disabled and have had a hard time dating and need some confidence advice. Really good question. Well, I think confidence advice is actually my area of expertise. I'm gonna tackle this question. Go for it. Just because yeah, I listening. feel like I can. I understand what you're saying. Saying, I hear you, but let me put it to you this way. No matter what you are, no matter how universe made you, you are the only one you in this universe and that makes you so special and so beautiful. Listen, I have plenty of things that are quirky, that are weird, that some people might find weird or off. I don't look at them that way. I look at it as my special little something. It makes me unique and beautiful to my one special person in my life. You should focus on your inner well-being as well as your unique, true, beautiful self. With your disability, I'm sure you've had things to overcome. That is so much more than what other people who don't have your disability have to overcome. So that makes you so much more powerful and so much more stronger. So that is your strength and just keep that, hold on to that and never forget that. It's time for the flash round. We're gonna flash round each other. Relationship questions. Ah! Okay, this part of the episode is all about answering the questions as fast as you can, getting as much covered in the least amount of time as possible. Okay, okay. what's the secret to your relationship? Transparency. <laughs> <laughs> what's the secret to making a man happy? Good sexy times. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like it if I cooked and cleaned every day? No, because you don't know how to cook and you don't know how to clean. <laughs> Would you like it if I were the YouTube uh, celebrity and you were the behind the scenes person? Hell no, because he's a 90% extrovert and I could not compete with that. <laughs> what would you do if I came home with a lipstick kiss mark on my collar? I would question you about the lipstick kiss on your collar. <laughs> 
But I would probably be like, you came from a makeup event, right? Someone just like hugged you and they were like up to hear yeah, you. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. What would you do if you found out that a friend of yours mm -hmm. had a crush on me? Um, happens already. It's, it's already happened. <laughs> <laughs> You're attractive. It would actually be kind of weird if some of my guy friends didn't find you attractive. It says a lot about my guy friends what the next move they make is. Mm. And that's why they're my friends. Yeah. So watch out for those creepers. What's the biggest <laughs> mistake I've made in a relationship? Right to the point. I think sometimes you don't put yourself in my shoes. Wow, I disagree. Sometimes you come from a male perspective. You don't understand I'm what the male. woman goes through. I think a lot of women expect the man to be so well in their shoes. We can't. We're men. I think I follow you in the makeup industry. It was an industry I didn't want to be in. I didn't know anything about. I'm completely open-minded. I support you. I try to be empathetic by doing things for you for your career and you do for mine. So that is my way of being empathetic. So right now you said something that I completely disagree with. So I, first thing I got was I felt, wow, I can't believe she just said that. I caught that feeling and I said, well, am I gonna run with that and defend it? Or I'm gonna let her know how I feel without getting mad. And that's exactly what I did. This is a winded answer to a flash round question. Yeah, yeah, but it was an important one because there was something that happened there in a relationship right in real time and we worked through it. And that's how you do it. So, my turn. And you seal it with a kiss. Why aren't you affectionate? I think that's for another series episode. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! The difference between a male and a female's expression of, of emotion and affection, episode two. That's what a good what one. do you think? Comment down below and let me know what you think of that idea. That's a good one. <laughs> <theory. laughs> huh? I need a drink. We have nothing. Sorry. You hit your hand? Yes. I'm Mariam and this is Lee and we finally I'm Mariam and this is Lee. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had a moment. <laughs> you <did? laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, for tuning in. Please leave us any more questions down, down below. below. Let us know what you think should be the name of our relationship advice series. Mm. We were thinking maybe ask Marley, because Mariam and Lee, together we are Marley. M-A-R-L-E-E. -E. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. Check out some of our other videos right, right there. here. Click on them. You know the drill. And we will see you guys in the next one. Mwah, Mwah guys. Bye, love guys. you guys. Thanks for watching. Sending love and hugs. And, and happy relationships. More love to you. Arr. Bye, guys. Bye.